Hi, now I've already shown my 12 volt stuff here in my camper. Now, what about my 110? I'm going to go over this. I have my 1100 watt power inverter over there. It's on. Now, this is now the 110 is now working. So, let's test this out before I turn anything else. It's going to pull extreme power, such as this. This will pull a lot of power. As you can see. Alright, all my 12 volt stuff except for the ceiling fan here is on. I have a light here on. Over here, I have batteries charging. Now remember, this is all off of a very small um, 30 watt um, solar panel. I don't need all this on now. This is all off a 30 watt solar panel. So, and a one single small battery. Now we already have this plug going. We have this plug going. Now about this plug. Now I'm not gonna leave this on long because I only have the single battery and the single solar panel on here. But this is to show you that rigging it up this way lets you use your 110 plugs as well as your 12 volt stuff. Now you can see that is pulling a great deal of power. Having this on just pulls that little battery very quickly. But yes, all the 110 plugs in here do work. I don't need this on. I really don't even need this on. So, let's go over this. All my 12 volt stuff in here works. All the 110 plugs, now there are only three plugs in here. I actually added this plug with the USB charging over here on this end. Even though the solar charger controller has USB charging and I installed USB charging under there. So all the 110 plugs and all the 12 volt stuff in here works. Now I do have extra fuses for that. This is a must have. If you are going to run a camper or a small shed or anything off of a DC to AC power inverter, you need to know what size fuses it takes and you need to have spares. This is 50 fuses, 25 in each bag. These are 10 amp fuses. Now my DC AC power inverter down there uses three 10 amp fuses. And you can see I can charge batteries in here. I can run my 110 in here. I can run my 12 volt. Now someone that watches some of my videos and I do watch some of theirs. I like watching their videos. Uh, RG Homestead, Arizona. They have some excellent animal videos. Um, they have a pond that has all kinds of animals show up. They did mention they thought I was selling the camper. The camper is still listed for sale. But I don't know if I've covered this or not. I've had two people inquire about the camper. One wanted to give me $100 for it and the solar and, and everything in here. And I'm like, no, that's not going to work. The second person literally wanted to pay nothing and be able to stay in the camper here on the property. I couldn't do that even, even if I wanted to. My landlord literally lives in the house right across the street. And he is kind of a jerk. He did evict somebody 
because they let someone stay in a camper they had. They had a truck camper, and he was letting somebody stay in the truck camper, and he evicted the guy. So, you know, that's not going to work for me either. Um, so, yeah, the camper's still listed for sale. My girlfriend did say, if we keep getting people like that, then we ought to just keep it, fix it up myself, and keep it for ourselves. Because all the 110 plugs work. Now, with my large solar array that I have, I have 1,200 watts of solar. I only have 400 watts connected right now. If you see some of my other videos, you can see I have a single 100 watt solar panel that I do testing with. That is out of my solar, uh, solar setups that are in storage. So, you know, once I'm done with it, it goes back into storage. But yeah, the 110 plugs out here do work. They work fine. Unfortunately, here's the problem. Here's the one issue you're going to run across if you are using a setup like this with the single battery. Let me get this out of the way and show you. Now, I did hook up some stuff up to the front so I can charge the battery in different ways. And right there that is a very small battery um, if I was gonna run, be running 110 plugs in here I would have no less than three dual cycle marine batteries 122 amp hour each now I understand I only have two out there uh, by the apartment in my uh, plastic container but if you're going to be living full time in a camper, two batteries is not going to be enough if you're going to be using 110 plugs. Like I said, watch. I mean, just by me turn that was completely full when I came in here. Watch what happens. That is pulling so much power out. Because this little battery is not made for that. This little battery here is more or less made for small items. Possibly, you know, running something like a laptop, charging phones, things like that. It is not nearly big or strong enough to run heaters, uh, things like that. I wouldn't even run a TV off that. Uh, depends on how many watts the TV pulls. A large TV, absolutely not. One that pulls 65 watts, sure. No problem. But anything that pulls a good amount of power, that will go dead really quickly. One single battery is not enough if you're running things like microwaves, coffee pots, space heaters. Not nearly enough. And you can see it is charging back up. It's not taking long to charge back up. But there is a power drop. Let me turn this back on and you will see it. Now this is putting out heat. It is a small heater. Would I use a heater this size for something this size? No. Let's go over here check these. Charging. Like I said, the three plugs I have in here, and I, there are only three. That's one I put here. One here. And one over there. Is that enough plugs? Yes, for a reason. The more plugs you have, the more shit you're going to have plugged in. A lot of items have passive power draw, which means even if it's off, it's still drawing power. So to make sure you don't draw your battery down too much or overload your system, having less amount of plugs. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a plug over here. Um, I haven't seen one. I mean, there may be one under here. I don't know. So, do my 110 plugs work out here? Absolutely. Eh, there's midnight. Absolutely.
Now, the reason I have this small stuff out here plugging it in, my girlfriend is off today, and I did not want to drag a bunch of crap out here and made several trips in and out of the apartment. So I just, you know, I already had the small heater out here from the last, um, when I drained the, the battery pack and did the um, uh, experiment on my solar um, power station, BS, whatever it was. So I already had this out here, and I just grabbed a couple more things to show you. Something like this can be used. This is USB charging, but it also has regular plugs. So I can plug stuff in here. I can put a fridge up here, plug it in there. You know, I could, you know, a, you know, a little heat or something like that. So it's not an issue having plugs, but you have to make sure you do not leave stuff plugged in if you're on a small solar system. There is passive draw through some appliances and some items that will constantly suck power even if it's shut off. And when you're running off solar or a small system, you need to make sure that you save all the power you can save. But yeah, all my plugs work. My 110 plugs work. Um, I could actually have more 110 plugs. I don't see a need because this this camper so small and I don't see a lot of stuff uh, us running a lot of stuff in here uh, a couple laptops maybe uh, maybe I'll put a TV up here somewhere I don't know um, but like I said other than that the 110 plugs do work the solar is charging the battery back up but it is very cloudy out you can you can see how cloudy it is but yep there's my 110 plugs working once again, I'll show this one. This one, the plug itself does work, but I have the USB plugged in here to charge these batteries. These take about three hours for two batteries and six hours for four batteries to charge fully. So, if you need something with batteries, and you need batteries, having rechargeables, and a way to charge them, even if you don't have extra stuff, so you can just set it and forget it and leave it and come back and they're charged, this is a really good idea. That way you can always be charging your batteries and rotate your charging. If you're using these, you can be like charging these or whatever. That way you always have charged batteries. And like I said, the 110 does work. Everything does work. Uh, you can see the positive cable in here from when I hooked up the stuff on the front. The negative is still hooked up on the front. I disconnected the, all the positive side out front except for the wire going from the battery to the bus bar. So if you haven't seen that video, check that out. Alright, that is it. I am fixing to go. Um, like I said, make sure if you have a power station, not power station, excuse me, a DC to AC power inverter, Make sure it's large enough to carry what you need to carry. Now, if I had a microwave in here, I would have at least a 1,500-watt power inverter down there. Unless I had a 600-watt microwave. Um, possibly 7. That will run our 700-watt microwave, but it's, it's touchy. But it will run it. But I would go with no less than a 1,500-watt DC to AC power inverter if you're running a microwave, any size microwave, and many more batteries. At least three lead acid dual cycle marine batteries. At least three, four if possible to make sure you have the storage and the power going out you need. 
and a much larger solar array. This is a single panel on a 10 amp charger controller. So it takes a while to charge this battery back up on such a small panel. Okay, um, like I said, that's it. Um, if we don't get any good buyers on our camper, uh, my girlfriend told me if we don't get any decent people looking at it, then we ought to just keep it and fix it up. It won't take me long to fix up really everything to where we, it's livable. It won't be perfect. It won't look perfect, but it will definitely be livable. So, that's it. I am fixing it to go. Oh, and I do have a drain coming for this. I hope I got the right size for this. To go through the floor to drain out. The shower itself will just drain on the ground. Which is not a big deal for me. Um, I don't want it on the tank. I don't want the tank to fill up too fast. And I will start working on these walls pretty soon. Um, I already started scraping some of the rotted stuff out. And you can see that over there. So I'll start working on this pretty soon. Um, I'm just going to clean all this out. Make sure all the studs in here are supported. And just go from a piece of wood, say to here, down to the floor. And cover this up and insulate it. That's not going to be an issue. You can see there's no light or anything from over there. I have to see if I uh, cock that shut. Because if I didn't, it would be much easier to get the wood in here. Um, cut it to length and get the wood in here. But anyway, um, that's it on a different subject. All right, anyway, I'm fixing to go. Yes, the 110 plugs do work. Even though I'm showing nothing in all my other videos other than DC, DC is easier for me to show. Everything's already in here set up. And with such a small battery and solar setup, running anything AC, is that battery is going to take a hit. Now this is a um, LED 25 watt, so this doesn't pull that much power. In fact, I believe the solar panel itself is bringing in enough power to cover that. But something like this, you know, running this, this battery is going to get a hit. It's going to get hit hard. Oh, it feels so nice. It's cold out here. Okay, anyway, uh, I apologize. This is a 20 minute video. So, yes, the 110 plugs work. Hooking it up from the solar to a battery to a power inverter over, up, and just plugging it straight in to the plug that the trailer plugs into um, your trailer plug. That goes out to your converter here that's how everything is ran so everything is running strictly off the solar in here one battery and the solar trust me I need more and once we get the money I will get more batteries for in here much better batteries but everything out here including the 110 plugs are running off that single battery and the solar panel and just so you know, there is no electrical uh, cord anywhere. So you know it is all running off of that. There is... Like I said, the positive on this is unhooked. The positive line is unhooked. The negative is right here. Negative is right here. All the positive is unhooked from 
the adapter and out here um, there's no positive line to hook it up but the negative itself is still connected and hooked up okay I am sorry about the length of this one but I did want to show you the 110 plugs do work out here um, even off the small solar setup do not overload your solar make sure you have enough uh, solar panels and a large enough charger controller to charge your battery bank uh, make sure for your power inverter you have spare fuses I literally have 50 spare fuses in case you blow a fuse that is your power right there that is your power if your fuses blow on that and you don't have replacement fuses you're without power unless you just got straight 12 volt I mean you'll still get 12 volt out of the batteries and if you have little plugs and stuff like that over there yeah you're still gonna get some power but your lights aren't gonna work your roof vent fans aren't gonna work nothing is going your plugs won't work make sure you have spare fuses whatever size fuses you need to get get I bought a hundred of these for literally ten dollars on eBay and here's 50 of them and I put one pack in my van and I put one um, probably about 10 over in the box where my solar charger controller is over on the wall make sure you have spare fuses that's a must do not forget that if you blow your fuses you lose your power okay I'm fixing to go I apologize they keep saying that but once again all the AC stuff does work and it's up to you how you decide you want to hook your plugs up I do like these plugs because I can plug in USB at the same time and yeah these are a little bit loose these and this one over here are a little bit loose I do have to replace the plugs or I will but that's it I'm fixing to go once again uh, figure what you want to run what you need to do how you need to build it and just do it it's not hard to set up a small solar system and it's really not hard at all to get your camper running off of your solar system especially if it's inside it's very easy to do and you already saw the vents working AC and DC are both working now you can still see that plug is still working still working so yes all AC and DC plugs in here outlets lights everything is still working now let's see what happens if I turn this on with this light absolutely nothing the light stays just as bright okay I'm fixing to go I apologize for the length of this video but please if you're setting up a small solar setup for a camper trailer and you want to do it this way you need your solar coming to your battery pack even if your battery pack is outside it's fine if your battery pack is outside use at least two gauge welders wire for uh, between your batteries and if you can possibly use that coming in two gauge coming into your power inverter that's fine you need something large to hook up to your power inverter not something real tiny if your batteries are inside you can hook it up this way that's not an issue you can hook it up however you want you don't even have to have it for outside as far as extra charging and whatever like I have but please make sure your cables are big enough 
you have enough batteries for storage and for charging and for the load you're carrying and make sure you have a large enough DC to AC power inverter and then you need a heavy duty extension cord and an end a male end for your extension cord so you can plug it in run it around you're plugging into your main box out here with your uh, cable your power cable and then that's all you need your solar panel solar charging controller you know basic petty stuff all right i keep saying i'm gonna go and i am this time i appreciate it if you made it this far uh, let's get that again like i said if you have a plug like this you can charge rechargeable batteries and you can see it looks like three of these are already charged and one is still charging so you can charge rechargeable batteries if you have a, a charger like this that is USB so you can always have your batteries charging you know and it will not take up your outlets or plugs anyway that's it I am sorry for the length of this one this is my 110 outlets working my DC and AC are both working I will show you one more time really quick I'm just gonna turn on a couple lights DC AC Turn that off because it uses a great deal of power. Okay, that's it. I'm fixing to go. Everyone have a good one. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. And once again, yes, we do have the camper for sale. And yes, I am still working on the camper. Um, whether we sell it or not, that's it's irrelevant. If somebody buys it, I want to have it to where they can like literally move in and stay in it with everything working from the water to the back wall fixed to any leaks of course are fixed um, I will probably just put a patch over the roof here it is all dry and I really don't want to tear everything down uh, same with here where it was wet everything's dry is just crumbling everything dry but where it got wet from where the, the vents leaked, you know, it's just crumbling. Okay, that's it. I'm fixing to go. <laughs> Everyone have a good day. Bye.